All right, we should be live here. Hopefully we'll come up here soon and everything will be fine. Hold on. Have to mute that. How's everybody doing out there? I don't know how the weather is for everybody else, but uh, we have a, a snowstorm outside right now, so not extremely warm in here, so I still have my coat on. So, I'll just give it a little bit of time here so everybody can kind of get in. All right. Okay, I guess we're going to get started here. Um, and uh, let me see here, let me share my screen. There. Okay. Here's the live stream from the other day. I'll wait till everybody can see this. All right, now let's, I'm just going to test the audio here um, real quickly. See if everybody can hear this. Okay, did you hear what uh, Spencer Smith was saying there? Did everybody hear the audio? <clears throat> If you can just let me know in the comments there real quickly, did you hear the audio? Okay. Hmm. All right, let me uh, do stop sharing. And uh, let me try this again. <laughs> uh, it's fun, isn't it? Um, share. I think what I did is I, I did. Uh, I should do share system audio. Okay, let me try that again. Um, okay, do this one here. Share system audio. I think that's where I went wrong. Okay, here we go again. Let's try this again. See if I can get this this time. Okay. My heart. And I still struggled with rock music. I mean, I, you know, I had a bad attitude. There's, there's a lot of things I was still doing. Okay. Can everybody hear the audio now? Let me know. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Good. Sounds good. Okay. So let's get started with this. Um, Looks good. Thank you, everybody out there. Okay. Now, here's the deal. Um, I'm going to be showing something in relation to the Godhead issue. And uh, what you're going to hear um, coming up here is Robert Breaker deceives Spencer Smith, just flat out deceives him. And um, Robert Breaker is a, is a very deceptive man. Right. We have been coming out against this guy. He first came out with his 2015, could the rapture be in 2015 thing, and I just kind of, whatever. 
you know, just let them alone and, and things. There's other people out there. I don't go after people that claim to be Bible believers all the time and whatever else. Um, but if I see some really big errors and people contact me and, hey, what do you think about this? Then I will come out and I'll say some things. So I'm going to go through this thing. And uh, this isn't me nitpicking or whatever else. This is a false prophet speaking, Robert Breaker, meaning. Um, but they're talking about Lordship Salvation here. And the Spencer Smith guy, I've seen a few of his videos. I, I don't know a whole lot about him or anything else. But um, he's saying that, you know, you can't really nail down what uh, this Lordship Salvation thing means because there's, it's not spelled out plainly in the King James Bible. You know, watch out for Lordship Salvation. It's the def definition changes. And if you look over here in the comments right here, um, you can see. Lordship salvation equals Brian Dunflinger. Laugh out loud there. Uh, I don't teach Lordship salvation. I never have. But of course, you can redefine it and make me teach it. All right. Um, so, but we'll play a little bit of the audio here and um, we'll see. Let's play a little bit of this. But as I've grown in the Lord through the years, God has changed my life and, and I've grown. And so the whole Lordship Salvation, I don't know how to navigate it real well because it seems like everybody's defining it a different way. Well, that's and they're the all problem. using yeah, yeah, that is the problem. And and that's the problem with like, you know, the the, the five points of the tulip of reformed theology. That's all man-made terms. And I don't even know. I mean, I just believe what the Bible says. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. I just believe what the Bible says. And I agree with that. Absolutely. You know, um, sure. And listen to what Breaker says. Right. And so that's that's the problem when that's you get into theology. You never go wrong going by what the Bible says. Yeah, I, I just Bible try to do that. Terms. Right. Let the Bible define the words. Okay. Let the Bible define the words. So we're not talking here about... Uh, you know, well, you can use words that aren't in the Bible to define certain things and whatever else. Um, you know, let the Bible define words. It ha the Bible has to be our final authority. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. good. Well, how about the Trinity? Do you believe in the doctrine of the Trinity? or Do you believe in the doctrine of the Trinity? Let the Bible define the words. Okay. Um, do you believe in the doctrine of the Trinity? Let the Bible define you know, the words. The word Trinity isn't in there, and the teaching of the Trinity isn't in there. He's a liar. He's a deceiver, Robert Breaker. And I know a lot of people have used the word Trinity. I used to use it early on in my preaching. It's wrong. But or is it a man-made Catholic doctrine? <laughs> See, man-made Catholic doctrine. Look at a little smirk there. Is it a man-made Catholic doctrine? Um, let me just show you. I'm trying to think if I can find the page here. Um, the Holy Trinity and the teaching of the faith. Okay. Mm -hmm. In order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, the church had to develop its own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin. Okay. Right there it is. The Catechism. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Hopefully you can see that. Right there. I look over there at my little window thing. Um, is it a man-made teaching? Yes, it is a man-made teaching. What are you smirking about there, Breaker? It is a man-made teaching. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I believe what the Bible says. There's, you know, there's three, there's one, and uh, I, I, I forget the verse there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I believe in the Trinity. Now, uh, how, how do you understand the Trinity? Uh, don't ask me. I don't I just believe it. Amen. I just believe what the Bible says. That's all I do. Believe it. <laughs> one, okay, believe what the Bible says. I'm not attacking the Spencer Smith guy. I'm just saying that Breaker here, he understands this issue. Okay. He's a liar on purpose. Um, but the Trinity is in the, isn't in the Bible, the King James Bible. The word is Godhead. Why are you know people continually fighting that? One God and three persons, right? Yeah. One God and three persons, right? No, no scripture. Yeah. Amen. I believe that because that's what the Bible says. And Jesus That's what the Bible says. That's a lie. Okay. 
here's my book. All right, I'll show it later, but I have a whole section here. Chapter 17, God in Three Persons. I debunked the whole thing. Every single reference to persons in the King James Bible, written out, typed out, not once is it a reference to God. Not once. That's so important. And you'll see how this lying devil right here, how he deceives him. Watch this. Jesus Christ is called a person by Paul. I forgive you in the person of Christ. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 1. Jesus Christ is the express image of the person of God the Father. Okay. Um, does that mean that they're identical twins if they're two separate persons? Uh, Jesus is the image of the person of God. Okay. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is the body. See, this idiot here was was messed up by Ruckman on this because Ruckman was messed up with the philosophy of Trinitarianism. He tried to blend what the Bible teaches about the Godhead and what the Bible or, and what the Trinity teaching and he tries to blend them together and it comes out all messed up. But let's continue here and then listen to what he says about the Holy Spirit. This is funny. And then the Holy Spirit is personified by capital C comforter. Mm. So they say, well, you can't be three. It's personified by the capital C comforter. Wow, that proves he's a person. <laughs> Stupid. Okay, continue. Persons, that's three different gods. No, it can be one God, but in three persons and still be one God if mm. you believe the King James Bible. Uh, no, if you believe the King James Bible, you are a liar, Robert Breaker. Liar. You are a liar. It's if you believe the King James Bible can be one God in three persons. There's not one verse of scripture that says that. Quit lying. And all you stinking Trinitarians out there, you're liars too. Otherwise, you're a heretic. I hate to say it, but yeah. But you're a heretic if you don't believe in the Trinity and the thing it's not actually in the King James Bible. And what's so weird is how all the cults, that's the first doctrine they get off on is the Trinity. Jehovah Witnesses mm -hmm. and a lot. Uh, how about this cult? How about that one? Trinity is very core doctrine of Roman Catholicism, according to the Catechism. Let's not talk about that, though. A lot of those. And now we're seeing those that claim to be King James Bible believers, and they're off on their doctrine. That's a shame. Yeah, and uh, those that claim to be King James Bible believers, and they're off on their doctrine. Um, who would you be refer referring to there, Breaker? Huh? You know, it's kind of a weird thing because... I've learned over the years that Catholics, once they establish that somebody is a heretic or especially an arch heretic, they uh, they don't so don't even mention their name, don't even speak their name. Well, you know what the funny thing is in the King James Bible, you're supposed to name names. Oh, some guy's a heretic. You name them. You don't just say, well, I don't want to say the name. I won't even speak the name of the, you know, heretic and whatever else. Breaker is an effeminate little sissy, is what he is. And he's false. He's not even real. I mean, the guy's a Gnostic, is all that he is. It's all just head knowledge. I believe I am saved, therefore I am. Oh, and I don't even have to ask God to save me. It just kind of, there you go, and you're saved. I believe, and, and I'm saved. And oh, well, then why does he have so many subscribers? That's my favorite thing, okay? I don't care how many subscribers I have. You know, I saw some idiot wrote earlier, you know, all these years you've been on YouTube and you only have 43,000 subscribers. Uh, okay. Um, how many people do you think the Lord would have if he was here on the earth? All right. You think the Lord would have millions of subscribers? <laughs> or Paul? Or anybody else that's truly saved? No. And the fact that Breaker admitted and I have the video proof of the thing. He admitted years ago that he fakes his sub subscriber counts. Well, it doesn't, he doesn't do it. It's people do it for him. And he doesn't really know how it works, but they artificially inflate his numbers. It's called artificial in intelligence bots that he purchases or other people purchase for him. He admitted it. It's illegal. You can't do that. It's lying. It's deception. He doesn't have 550,000 subscribers. Right? I mean, if he has 550,000 subscribers, he should be getting, you know, huge views on each video. But you just keep on, you, you stupid little idiot followers of this devil, you come out and you say, oh, he's your brother in Christ. We preach different gospels. How in the world is he my brother? 
let's continue here that with little effeminate sissy here robert breaker can't name names yeah and I, I i have to throw this out there too i think probably one of the areas um that i'm i need to do a lot more solidifying on is probably the in, in my understanding is the trinity because it is a it's a concept as it's not i think paul said there's some things hard to be understood and i think the trinity is a difficult doctrine uh mm -hmm. to articulate it it really you've really got to be sharp on that one so uh, you know i think that's one of the ones I, I i wish i could do a better job articulating uh that position but i do believe in the trinity yes yeah i would have said the same thing years ago to spencer smith if you're watching i know you were the other day um you need to study it more and pray about it. Don't just, oh, Brian Dunninger teaches the Godhead doctrine. I wrote a book on it here recently after this live stream came out. Um, I talked about my book coming out. Um, don't just get my book and then just believe what I believe or whatever. S search the scriptures, study the scriptures. It's one of the most amazing truths that there is. Jesus Christ is God, okay? Uh, and I mean that wholly and completely. Man is made after the similitude of God. And you're going to hear Robert Breaker deceive again on this point coming up here. Man has three parts, body, soul, spirit. Man is made after the similitude of God, body, soul, spirit. God is a body, soul, spirit. That's the three in one. They aren't three separate persons. And you have to drop the term Trinity and drop this three persons and God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. That stuff's not in scripture. It comes from the Vatican from the Catholic Church. Watch what Breaker does here coming up. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're made in God's image. He said, let mm -hmm. us make man in our image. Well, we are three parts. But oh, 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 hold on there, Breaker. We're three parts? No, God's three persons, so we should be three persons. See? Well, where are the other two persons at, Breaker? One's at uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, the other one down at McDonald's or something? I mean, come on here, Breaker. You stupid heretic, you. Yeah, we're one. So God can be one and yet be made up of three. It's it's right. It's so easy to to believe. It's so easy to believe, but then you have to put in Trinitarianism with it and totally mess it up. I mean, which one is it? The Godhead doctrine that there is body, soul, spirit, three and one, or is it three separate persons? Now, hard mm -hmm. to understand and explain, certain, but mm -hmm. he can do something I can't do. I mm -hmm. can't take my spirit out and send it to the store and then say, oh, by the way, go get some eggs, soul, while my body waits here. It doesn't. But you could do it if you had three separate persons. <laughs> it not work that way. But mm -hmm. at death, do I not separate? The mm -hmm. body stays here and then the soul and the spirit go over there. So our, we do move around and change. So it's all there. It's a good teaching. Well, another one quickly here. Uh, it's all there. It's a good teaching. And th then what's the little thing at the beginning? You see that? See the Satanism here? See the evil here? The deception? Well, oh, you're getting all worked up. Yeah, I do get worked up when I see people claiming to be Bible believing and they're fake. They're frauds. And I don't know, Spencer Smith, I don't know. If you understand what Breaker teaches for salvation, that he teaches that Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, is not the plan of salvation. I don't know if you know that. That he teaches that you do not call upon the Lord to be saved. And what you were saying earlier about the thing of a changed life following true conversion. Again, they teach that I, I, I say that there's sinless perfection. That's a lie. That's slander. I've never taught that. Of course, you're going to have sins and mess around and whatever else, which... You lined up with perfectly in the way that you answered Breaker's questions. But Breaker, these guys fight against the thing of a changed life. There's no calling upon the Lord to be saved. There's no coming to him in contrition and broken as a sinner. That's what Breaker's problem is. So um, if you want to see uh, some good things here, let me just get my videos up on. Um, if you want to know the truth about Breaker and some of the just flat out heresies that this guy has spoken that are just really bad stuff. Um, let me get that real quick here. Okay.
All right, let me just move this over to here. Okay. Um, you know, I have done a couple videos here. Um, you know, and again, here, this one, shocker, Robert Brake, Breaker caught just openly lying, said that Paul was a date setter. Um, no man knoweth the day or the hour. I do not concur. You know, he calls Jesus a liar in this video. You I mean, you can see it. It's not taken out of context. The whole thing, um, it's right there. And uh, did a big live stream the one time exposing his false gospel where you don't have to call upon the Lord to be saved. The guy's just a stinking heretic. And then uh, proof that, Ruck, or that Robert Breaker stole Ruckman's material. That's all he is. He's a Gnostic. Again, Robert Breaker, you're a Gnostic. All right? A will worshiper. It's all up here. That's all your salvation is. You didn't have to call upon the Lord to be saved. So, you know, yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, Robert Breaker openly deceiving. Oh, I do have another, other ones here. Um, there, he admits to monetization and uh, basically inflating his numbers. Why well, don't endorse Robert Breaker and Robert Breaker caught lying and uh, about the date of Israel and everything else, which he's come out at all. Oh, you know, there's certain things and whatever. In 1947, they were becoming a country. In 1948, they were officially a country. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, but uh, while I'm here, I'll just show a few things, um, another couple of interesting things that were sent to me. Uh, this here, uh, a sister in the Lord sent me this link to this place here, this Baptist church. And uh, Reverend Dr. Kent Burgui, or whatever, how do you say his name there? But uh, this one's interesting. Look at the uh, assistant pastor. Reverend Jason Alspal, or whatever, associate pastor for children and youth. He says here, see if I can get this bigger. Okay. Um, I was called to be the associate pastor of First Baptist Church in September of 2007 with a focus on developing children and youth ministries and educational ministries. Not long after moving to Dayton, I met my husband, Kirby. He's a sodomite, a pervert sodomite, and he's the assistant pastor of a Baptist church. And he works with children and youth. Yeah, that's what you want. A sodomite working with children and youth. And here he is. Here's the picture of him uh, at their cult building there. It looks like the symbol, the white dove flying down. It's the exact symbol of the uh, Knights of Columbus. But look at right there. IHS, the ISIS horse uh, set thing. The symbol of the Jesuit order. Right here we have it. The Christogram IHS is a monogram symbolizing Jesus Christ from Greek. It is an abbreviation of the name there for Jesus. The Order of Jesuits, in other words, the Society of Jesus, adopted IHS as its fixed emblem, the symbol in 17th century, in the 17th century, in other words. So, just a coincidence, okay? I'm a nut because I say the Jesuits are behind things and whatever. I show proof like this, and old Denlinger's just crazy. He's a conspiracy guy. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so one other thing I want to show here before uh, we conclude this whole thing is um, here a sister in the Lord made a, a little forum thing, a little fellowship forum type of a deal. If you're having a hard time, uh, you know, dealing with uh, or finding other people through the live stream thing here, you can go to this here. I can put the link up or maybe she'll put the link up. Um, but you can go there and you know introduce yourself. It's brand new. She just put it up. I know some people have been saying, I you know how do you message on um, in the comments or whatever else, or you don't really want to put out some personal stuff and whatever. So there you go. Um, you can check out this forum if you want to do that. KJVFellowship.freeforums.net. And um, just if you want to meet other Bible believers and, and things like that. So, um, but just getting back to this, I'm not going to play anything more about it, but just discussing this lying devil right here. Uh, you know, people that are deceived by this guy just angers me. Um, so, uh, let me see if I can stop the stop sharing. Okay.
So, but um, this is a little ministry update here. The sale of the book is actually going pretty well. So thank you to everybody out there who purchased the book. Uh, really great. It's neat to be able to have the book out there and, and know that it's going to straighten people out on who God is. Um, if you don't know about uh, Brother Jacob Thompson over at winepressnews.com, he did his book on the glory of the Lord, the Godhead doctrine, and he actually shows the quotes in there where the Catholics are, you know, a lot of people are coming out and saying, well, you know, we may, need to really push Trinitarianism forward. Um, I mean, he shows the actual quotes from it. So his is a lot more in-depth than my book. Um, so pick up a copy of his if you don't have one yet. Um, if you want all the documentation and everything. And, uh, but there's definitely a thing there about getting this Trinity teaching out there with people. And it's very deceptive. And it messes up. I mean, you, you basically are worshiping a false god when you're messing around with the Trinity. I mean, it's not in the Bible. <laughs> Duh. You know, the Bible needs to be our standard. The words of God should be in the, it's in the Bible. That's where our belief should come from. Uh, yeah. So, but here's the chapter I was talking about. Chapter 17, God in three persons. Right there. Whoop, this way. And I go through every reference to persons. Not once, not once does persons ever appear in relation to God. Not one time. So when some guy comes out and he says, hey, you know, uh, we need to have the Bible as our final authority, as our standard. And, um, you know, the, the King James Bible and all matters of faith and practice and then Trinity stuff and God in three persons. Um, no. So, um, anyhow, that's about all I have to say on that matter. Um, just irritates me so much. Uh, these fakers out there are, I think, the thing that, that uh, ticked me off more than anything else. So, um, but, uh, for those of you who haven't gotten the book yet, you know, I don't know where you're at and whatever else, but uh, I, I ordered, you know, 10 copies because I'm going to be giving them out. Um, and, uh, and they haven't come yet. So, you know, they're supposed to be here, I think, in another day or so or something like that. They said maybe delivery tomorrow, which I'm not sure if it'll deliver on Saturday or not up here. But, um, but I'd love to hear people's opinions and thoughts on the book. It is over on Amazon.com now. Um, not sure what other websites Lulu puts it. When you do global distribution, they, they put it on different websites. Barnes & Noble might be another one. Not sure. But um, certainly go and – I'm sure that – now I'm saying that go and, and, you know, do reviews. I'm sure that the Goonies are going to go and, you know, ones that haven't even read my book, and they'll probably go and write all kinds of nasty comments, you know, on Amazon to try and tear me down and whatever – and let me just, I have to say this, because I've seen the very favorite tactic of my enemies to try and destroy me is that they try to tear, take people away from supporting this ministry. Um, and I've had people, faithful supporters that have written me and said, hey, yeah, brother, I'm getting all this stuff from these people here. And they're saying, don't send them donations. Don't. It's a tactic of warfare. You cut off the supply lines for an army for an army and that army folds they can't continue these people want to destroy any donations that come into this ministry they want to stop us and you know that's what they do so whenever you see that thing of of uh you know don't buy brian's book you know don't do this book is ridiculous it's heresy don't buy it it's terrible and whatever that's probably what we'll see on amazon um yeah so um, but that's about all I'm going to say on that, I guess. So what are we at here? 29 minutes. I guess we could, if, does anybody have any questions or anything? I, I saw one up here. Let's see if I can get back to it. Just glanced at it and saw it as comments were going. Uh, where are they at here? 
I think somebody, I don't know where the comment went to, but somebody said, um, you know, is, is my book available on my website? No, it isn't. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have that, you know, whole thing worked out right now. I might end up doing that eventually, um, purchasing a bunch of copies of my books and, and having them here that I can ship them out and whatever else. Uh, so, um, Um, Brother Brian, did you check out Service Christie's channel? Like links? Yeah, I did. Um, watched a video or two. That was a few days ago. I don't remember what all um, was on there. Um, so. How do you do, deal with betrayal and slander um, on a daily basis? <laughs> um how do I deal with betrayal? Well, I just, I kind of give it over to the Lord and just say, okay, Lord, you know, they did this to you. It's happening to me. Their people are lying about me and, and whatever else. This guy used to be a friend of the ministry. Now he's stabbing me in the back. There, there are people whose whole ministry now is all just attacking me and tearing down everything I do. Latest one is Philip Newton, just to put it out there. Um, Philip Newton is not qualified to be a preacher. I, he, um, basically committed fornication with a woman, claimed it was marriage, and then, you know, oh, it's not, it's not really, uh, you know, it, it didn't work out because she was abusive and she, or she was this and she was that. Um, it was not uh, he, a real marriage, and that's why I just call it fornication. Um, I don't agree with him at all in what he's doing, and he, there's clearly emulation of me, and it's just, it's disgusting. It really is. Um, I do not recommend Philip Newton. I've asked him to remove my videos, and last I checked this morning, he still hasn't done it yet. Um, so I have to warn about uh, Philip Newton. Uh, don't mess with him. There's some major problems there. Um, major. Um, anybody can disagree with me on the Christmas thing. And they say I'm not into it, whatever, but it's a liberty issue, and I don't care what anybody says. It's a liberty issue, and that's the way it is. So somebody wants to go over there and mess around, you're going to get messed up with him. Um, he has no business teaching or preaching the word of God. And um, that's just the way it is. So there, there'll be stuff coming out on him if he doesn't, um, doesn't repent. And just, you know, he, he was actually going to delete his whole channel and everything else. And I tried, well, you know, just do some videos, you know, maybe not real heavy doctrine type of stuff. And uh, just, you know, Take it easy. Be careful. You know, you, you don't qualify to be a, a pastor. First Timothy chapter three, you're not qualified for that. Um, but, you know, you can make some Christian videos, just nothing real big and whatever else. And he's just gone off the deep end. So um, avoid Philip Newton. Um, I would avoid him like the plague. So uh, just to put that out there, like I said. Um, so to answer the question about betrayal, yes, it's happened quite a few times and I just Kind of accept it and move on uh slander again i just let the lord take care of it the people have to lie about me to make their points you know whatever uh, the lord will answer that whole thing so question have you covered the teaching about jesus's earthly ministry being the first half first three and a half years of daniel's 70th week no i, I don't believe that I do not, I don't agree with that. Um, so. Got a creepy vibe from Newton. Seems like he tries to copy you. Yeah, he does. And again, you know, people brought that up and, Philip Newton's trying to copy you, trying to look just like you, buying the same banners, wearing a, you know, cowboy hat type of thing, and, and just, and I try to defend, well, you know, okay, you know, and, uh, yeah, there's some major problems there with that guy, so,
Question, is there a difference between Cambridge or Oxford? Which one do you recommend? There are differences, they're minor, they're not a big deal. Um, I do recommend Cambridge, King James Bibles, if you don't know what he meant by that. Um, now I did miss questions, by the way. Um, if you've asked a question, um, <laughs> are you a Ruckmanite or Steven, Steve Andersonite or just a barbarian? I prefer barbarian. <laughs> That's what people call me, so you just kind of go with it, you know. Um, you know, so I just uh, have to answer Brother Matthew here. Is this a new forum? I left the old one, too many issues. Uh, it's going to probably get infiltrated and, and whatever else. It's a brand new one, she wrote there. Um, but the people infiltrating us right now, it's its just so disturbing. You know, I just we're just here trying to study the King James Bible. You know, we believe in natural health. We are, we, you know, we discuss doctrinal stuff. You know, well, we have to infiltrate and everything else. <sighs> I hope you understand that if you're newly saved, you're when you get into the real Bible believing movement, you see that there are just so many hypocrites and trolls and whatever that just come in here and just try to sow division all the time. And you read the New Testament, it's exactly what was going on back then. So it's not anything weird or whatever. Um, question I regularly go to the gym to lift weights since I live in the city I believe it's necessary for health do you exercise as in running or gym no I do not go to I've never been inside of a gym I well no I actually went to one time my brother used to have a older brother used to have a screen printing business at Gold's gym he'd make their t-shirts for him and so I helped deliver shirts one time that's the only time I've ever even stepped foot in a gym um uh being out in nature and everything else and doing firewood and, and all the chores that I have to do on a regular basis, uh, there's no point in having a gym membership. <clears throat> Brother Brian, being a single man looking for a saved woman for a wife, any recommendations? Pray like crazy. I mean, pray and fast and, and pray and fast some more. Uh, it's hard to find a good wife. Okay. Um, how long do you think one should wait to start talking, preaching to others? Well, you can talk to people about Jesus Christ, you, you know, your testimony and whatever else. You can do that right away. But, you know, you really need to spend some serious time in the Word before you can really, you know, uh, get into doctrinal type of stuff. Um, question, do you use the Strong's Biblical Concordance to do any research? Yes, I do. I do use Strong's Concordance, but I do not um, recommend the Greek or the Hebrew. The Greek and the Hebrew word tie-ins and whatever else that are, that are in the back of Strong's Concordance are not based on the received text. They're based on a um, what's called the majority text, falsely called the majority text, by Har Hodges and Farstad. It's basically a lot of times it'll give you, sometimes it'll give you the right reading that's in the King James Bible if you look up the word in Greek. Other times it'll give you a new version reading. So I confronted a pastor on that years ago. Um, don't mess with the Greek or, or the Hebrew in the back of the Strong's Concordance. Um, do you use a Greek text like the Texas Receptus? In other words, no, I don't. I don't, I mean, if I have to, you know, look up some kind of Greek word or something, I might, but for the most part, I don't mess with uh, anything like that. I don't mess with Greek. Have you watched Spencer Smith's Third Adam series, Great Viewing, Debunks Paganism and False Christianity? No, I haven't. I haven't seen it. Um, so I don't really know much about it, to be honest with you. Question, can you give a hint to some future studies you are working on? Um, one is going to be on 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, and 
kind of thinking about that one. But there's there's a couple other things I'm I'm looking into right now. Uh, I don't know. I'll just I was going to make an actual video um, about this, but I could put this out there for everybody who's viewing right now. Um, thinking about doing um, and some videos on the off grid thing, you know, living off grid and whatever else, because things are going to get really rough in the future. So uh, it's a it's a big area of research and study for um, us, me in particular. I've learned about it or I've studied it for many years, I should say. Um, so I've thought about that and, uh, I'm probably going to do a video just asking people their thoughts, but I'll just put it out there. I have all the notes written in this notebook here, 14 parts to the, um, off grid seminar I was going to record and, you know, trying to put the thing out. It's, uh, it's going to be a lot of work to do it as an actual video series or whatever but in a live stream i could have photos up that i could put up and show things and it might be a little bit easier so i don't know if um people would be interested in the thing of an off-grid seminar or not so yeah just let me uh address here what matthew brought up um Brian no longer puts out his email for personal correspondence. Um, I had to hide that years ago. I had to hide that years ago because we were, I was literally, I think back in 2014 or so, I was getting about, I don't know what it was, 400 a day or something like that. And it just, I have a hard time answering email because I get a lot of them and I, I type with two fingers and, you know, after about, 12 emails my brain starts shutting down because it's you know what about divorce and remarriage and and uh what's the truth about the serpent seed doctrine and what about a uh, possible dispensation between the and you know it's all these different things my brain just kind of the and uh so really Brother Brian, Gary Hudson, who debated Peter Ruckman on the KGB, is no long, longer serving as a pastor at his IFB church. Gary has a guitar shop repairing guitars for rock satanic musicians in Florida. <laughs> That's interesting. I did not know that. Thank you for sharing that. I. Why am I not surprised? Um, how do you like your coffee? Uh, I don't drink coffee. I drink tea. Herbal tea. I actually had even chai this morning if you know anything about russian tea we um harvest it ourselves and ferment the leaves and everything else so really good tea and very good for you so um what are your thoughts on noah's ark found in turkey genesis 8 4. um uh, i don't really know i know that uh what's his name the um seventh day advance adventist guy ron wyatt he put out some pretty decent stuff on that they found noah's ark and whatever else i don't know it's an interesting thing, but, you know, I don't know. So. Okay. Well, I just wanted to put this thing out there real quickly. Um, show a couple of things that, that were sent to me about that sodomite Baptist preacher. <laughs> These church buildings, I'll tell you what, you know, just. You know so messed up um late to tune in what is the issue with breaker um just lying and duplicity on the the uh uh trinity godhead issue he both basically just spoke both of them spoke the lie of the trinity first the three persons and he speaks the truth of the godhead three parts after that and says oh it's the same thing it's not the same thing okay he's a liar so Question, you suggested Dr. Berg in one of your videos. Do you think keto diet is biblical? No, I don't think it's biblical. Um, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, Eric Berg has puts out some good stuff and he puts out some bad stuff. So any kind of natural health guy, just 
be very careful what you're seeing there. Try things out that they say. If it works, good. If it doesn't, then move on to the next thing there. Um, what do you think of prayer books like the Book of Common Prayer? Are set prayers a good idea? Never a good idea. I don't believe in, in prayers, written out prayers. It's a personal relationship. You know, if I walked up to you and you said, hey, Brother Brian, how are you? And I take out a little book and I say, <clears throat> excuse me. I am fine. I am glad to meet you. It is nice to see you again. <laughs> Be a little bit insulting to you? Yeah, of course it would. Well, why would Jesus Christ think any differently than that? You know, I mean, we come to the Lord and you say, um, hey, here's my prayer. <clears throat> oh, Lord God. You know, and you give this prayer thing. No. You know. So. Okay, well, I think that's going to be it for now. Um, okay, I'll do this one finally. Question in the King James Bible over to the side it has the word Trinity. Uh, I don't I think you're saying believe in Trinity. Can you mark it out of the Bible? Well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean the little scripture references and go here and go there and whatever else, yeah, you can get rid of that. Absolutely. So okay. Um, that will be it for this video, and we'll see everybody in future live streams. Thank you very much for watching.